Welcome back, everybody. I'm Stephen Levine from NASCAR Illustrated, sitting alongside Tom Vandervoort from Sporting News. We are going to preview this weekend's race at Kansas Speedway. It's going to be an interesting one because we've only had one event there, one cup event, since the repave in the middle of last season. Yeah, we've had a whole winter on the racetrack. We have. And that'll... And change it's a, it. A Kansas winter. Absolutely. That will change the racetrack. I think the real question becomes how big is the groove? Has it widened out a lot? Because uh, in the fall, it was pretty much a one groove race. Yeah, and, and there were a lot of cautions in the fall. A lot of cautions. Guys were not used to the track. It was very fast, but still slick, if that makes any sense. Uh, because Kansas, you know, it looks like Chicagoland, but just doesn't have the grip level uh, that that track has. So guys were losing control. I mean, we saw Jimmy Johnson try to pass, I think it was. True X, maybe, and he lost control up against the wall, had to salvage a finish. There were a lot of cautions last year in this race. There and were. During a season where there were just not many cautions overall. And I don't think we should expect anything vastly different in this race. I still Maybe the groove has wind out a little bit, but I, think I we'll still see think. far fewer cautions. I still think personally. it's going to be a super fast race. Sure. I think it will be, you know, a track position race. Uh, it was a track position race track before the repave, right. and the repave has only exacerbated that quality. Uh, it's going to be about, as a matter of fact, I think eight of 14 races have been won by somebody who started within the top. 10. Sure. And the thing of it is, you have to, as a race team, say to yourself, what is the best way? What are the things I need to master to, to get to the front, to pass other race cars? And when you look at it here, it's like it's more pit strategy, pit stops, fuel mileage. It's more that and a little bit less. Oh, I, you know, I, I fixed that handling problem. Now I can drive down underneath the guy in turn two because you might be faster than somebody else. But if you're not you know, enough faster, you just get stuck because of the dirty air and you just can't get enough grip uh, when you get out of that one groove to get by them. So looking for two tire stops, looking... Uh, yeah, depending yeah. on tire wear. Uh, and looking for fuel mileage. I think I, you have to say it again, this race has been a fuel mileage race at times in the past. Absolutely. So that's something you got to keep your eye on here. All right, well, we're going to come back with our picks oh, yeah. with a special guest. A special guest. Um, you know, we, we started this last week. Right. It's going to be a weekly thing this Which season is great. where we have our special guest. Very now, special. Last week, none of us picked the right no, the right No, but one of us did have the highest finishing okay. pick. Okay, and we'll talk about that after this magical wipe. All right, we're back, and as promised, we have classed up the joint with Kim Goon, Miss Sprint Cup. And What's we with the green? We didn't get to vote on this fire suit. I know you didn't. Well, we're wearing green because April... There's Earth Day, so we're promoting phone recycling as well as we have a buyback program where buy back your old cell phones. We just want to keep the phones out of the landfill. And then in addition to it's National Distra Distracted Driving Awareness Month, so just encouraging people to focus on driving. So just a reminder, so we'll be donating this in Kansas this weekend. Okay. And it's like we're going to Kansas. There's no place like home, Emerald City. It just all. Oh, my gosh. All, right? well, this is like so many right? levels. So but you, many should have levels. On, you should have on ruby sequined races. Is there like yeah. any ruby like red. Hegel or Marx or anything involved what? in this? No. What? <laughs> I'm talking about like philosophy. Like there's got to be some deeper level. You just, Freud. Went, you level. just went way off in the left field. Yeah. I guess Hegel so. Hegel and Marx. You're he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. History major. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Kansas um, because... You know, it's a pretty good track for Jimmy Johnson. It's a pretty good track for Greg, Greg Biffle. Mm -hmm. Matt Kenseth won there last yeah, year. Last have you, win for, have you considered your uh, pick? Ralph because your, your compatriot last week, Brooke, God love her. Yeah, God love her. She went out on and a we limb. And we did too. We did too. And it was a really, really long limb with yeah. her Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And it broke. Yeah, the limb kind of broke. I don't know if it was the cowboy hat he wears or the belt buckle or she's right. Texas. Mm -hmm. Can be distracting. Um, mine's not on a limb, but I feel like it's a safe pick. I, I feel like I'm going to get flack for it. Oh, you, I well, don't you're gonna think get, so. You're going to get flack okay, for whoever so you pick. So there's only two drivers that have an average finish better than 10 mm -hmm. out of the current right. drivers. That's Brad Kay and, and Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that, Hendrick has had four wins at Kansas. Yep, including the first two by Jeff Gordon. Right, and then the other two by Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. The most, I think they're tied with one other uh, shop. Are you telling us you're points. going with Jimmy? So I'm going with Jimmy. That's, hey, you know I'm what? Going with Jimmy. We got a saying around here, which is the obvious pick is not necessarily okay. a bad idea. All I right. do it all the time. Okay. So I'm not giving you grief. I don't, yeah, know, if that I don't know if it's obvious, but it's definitely a solid pick. It is a pick. solid There's pick. There's nothing Look. wrong. Look, if you're under the basket with the ball, just shoot the layup. There you go. You know, you don't have to get Jimmy fancy. Johnson's going to be a solid pick anywhere but perhaps Sonoma and Watkins Glen. Yeah, pretty much. And he's won at Sonoma anyway. Yeah, but, <laughs> so. you know, 
even a blind squirrel can find a nut. Now, are you, are you gonna go saying next? Jimmy's a blind squirrel? When it comes to Sonoma, are you going to go next or am I going to go next? Well, I guess I am. Because, right. I mean, I, you know the guy Because you like, know who I want to pick. Yeah, and, and I, you're going to pick him, aren't of you? Of course, oh. of course. Look, Martin Truex Jr. was second in both races here last year, and he was second last week at Texas with a dominant car, got beat out of the pits by the pole sitter, okay. which happens. I think you got to feel good about the 56 car. I think uh, so. I second think cup choice. win. If he wins this race now, and whenever he wins this next race, assuming that he does, it'll be the longest stretch between wins, between two wins for anybody ever in the Sprint Cup Series. Ever. So, so I think we're going to see history. You want a history making weekend. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and I think it's a great pick. I was going to pick him. And of course, if he wins this race, he doesn't have to rely on the fan vote to get into the Sprint Cup All Star good race. Point. Right. Very you know, good point. So, um, Always good. thinking about the Sprint All Star race, well, aren't you? When I have Kim here, it yeah. just sort of naturally there's this energy. In the green suit. Well, if he doesn't right. win, well, they can still vote. They can, they but can. of course, well, never mind. So Martin <laughs> Truex Jr. is off the table, and that was going to be my pick. So well, hurry then, up. We don't have all day. I, oh, wait. Did anybody rush you? No, but I didn't go last. <laughs> I guess then I will go with Greg Biffle. You know, this is a Roush Fenway style track, um, and uh, Greg has been strong at times this season. Maybe not as consistent as he was fourth uh, last week, as right? we'd like to see. But That's you know, not who I thought you were going to go with. Who do you think I was? I thought you were going to go with Clint Boyer. No, just because mm -hmm. of the Kansas yeah, connection. Kansas connection. He really wants to get a win there. Yeah. Yeah. You know who surprisingly struggles here, though? Kyle Busch struggles at this track. He's not very good. That's here. okay. I'm two for two with Kyle in victory lane, so. I can't say I want to see him in victory lane. Okay. All right, I'm going so with Greg Biffle. So tired of seeing Kyle in victory <laughs> Martin Truex Jr., Jimmy Johnson. Here are the standings as they run now because Tom picked Casey Kane last week. Who was the highest finisher. He was the pick. highest Solid finisher choice. of the Solid three. Choice. I was he's, thinking about doing he's it again. He's there. <laughs> um, I picked Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was the second highest finisher, so I'm uh, currently in second. And, and the and Miss Sprint Cup representative, Ricky who shall remain me. nameless, Don't look at me. <laughs> Brooke, picked uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Thanks Not for watching, everybody, and thank you, Kim, for yes. joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely.